welcome back to my channel. So in this video, we'll be making this dual flasher. It is made with a triple five timer IC and a nine volt battery. It is off the concept of a triple five timer IC being on a stable mode. Watch the whole video to create this and be an expert on this. Also refer to the description. There are lots of details in the video, sources in such a diagram. Thank you. So here are the components required. Two 330 ohm um, resistors to go with the LEDs because we're using a 9 volt battery, a 100 kilo ohm resistor, and a 1K resistor, a 10 microfarad capacitor, a triple five timer IC, two LEDs, doesn't matter which color, some jumper wires, a 9 volt battery with a 9 volt battery case, and a breadboard. So let's get right into the tutorial. Now let's connect our triple five timer IC. So make sure you know where the notch is. And the notch is basically the top part, which has that little dent in it. So let's place that on the breadboard. You may probably know how, but you just place it like that, where it's in the two lines. So you can see here on the paper that I'm gonna show next, that there is, there's a pin out. Okay, so now let's connect our pins because we need some pins being connected to make this triple five timer IC actually work. So let's connect pin two, which is one, two. So pin two to pin six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Just like that. So as you can see, there, the pin two and pin six are connected. Now, let's connect pin four and pin eight. So, one, two, three, four. Let's move that. It's beneficial to use connectors because they're really small. And then five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so there, we have those pins connected. Now, let's connect our capacitor. So I have a pretty long leg capacitor. So this, the longer leg's the positive, the shorter leg's the negative. So connect your negative pin of your capacitor to pin one of the IC and the positive pin to pin two of the IC. Like that. So my negative pin is in line with pin one and my positive pin is in line with pin two. So now we have our capacitor and our triple five timer IC. Connected. Look on what we have right now. Yes. Then we have pin two and pin six connected, pin four and pin eight connected, and our capacitors connected. So next, let's extend the output pin, which is pin three, to wherever you want on the board. So pin three is just the third one to the left of the timer IC. And let's just put it in line with it. So this is pin three. And then we can extend this. Maybe let's say right there, it doesn't really matter. So the output pin of our IC is pin three. That's where all the output gets given. So we wanna connect that to our LED. So we have that. Then let's take this and put it on the breadboard like that. Now let's take one of our LEDs and put our positive pin on it like that. Next, let's connect the negative terminal of the LED to the negative terminal of the breadboard via a via a 330 ohm resistor. I meant to say via, I can't speak. Mm -hmm. So we have that. Now let's connect our resistors. So right now I'm on the other side of the IC and now let's connect our 1K ohm resistor, making sure that the pins are very small, they're like closed in, to pin six and pin, no, to pin eight and pin seven of the IC. Like this. Just stuff that in there. There. So that is between pin eight and pin seven of the IC. 
Next, let's connect our 10K ohm resistor to pin 6 and pin 7 of the IC. Just like this, like how I did for the 1K ohm resistor. And to make sure it's just in line. Where is it? Even I'm figuring this out as we go. So, let's connect it like that. So, now we have those connected. And you can see that these the two resistors right here are in line because as I said for both of them that they share pin seven. Just like that. So you should have your resistors connected like that. And make sure they're pushed down firm and they are well. And let's just push down all the jumper wires. Just push down these. Make sure everything's connected well to the breadboard. So now we have one LED connected, and now let's just test that as just one little To do that, we have to give power to our IC. So what we need to do is connect pin one of the IC to the negative rail of the breadboard and pin eight of the IC to the positive rail of the breadboard. And I have already done that right there. You can just see that terminal's connected. Now let's just make this like a little blinker. So let's take our nine volt battery, connect the pins. Let me straighten that out. There. So now it's blinking. But we can extend this output. We can give an output that when this is off, another one turns off. So then when this is off, then another one turns on. Because of this capacitor discharging and charging and giving voltage and not voltage to the capacitor. So let's try that. So to give power to this LED, we can use a couple cool things. Remember that we had pin four and pin eight connected, to the, connected together for the IC? What if we place one of the pins, the positive pin of the LED at pin four, and pin four is connected to pin eight, and pin eight is connected to the positive rail? We can use that concept so that basically this LED is connected to the positive rail, and the other side will be connected to the negative rail because of this extension. So let's do that. Connect your positive pin of your LED to pin four of the IC. But before you do that, let's connect it with a resistor so this doesn't get crowded and not good. So first of all, let's connect our negative terminal of the LED to pin three of the IC, the output pin. Let's do that. I'm just tilting it for my own reference because there are a lot of jumper wires and we don't really like that but so make sure there's one space in between so that it, so that your other pin isn't on pin four of the ic because we need to connect that with the resistor or this is gonna not be good so let's verify this is on pin three it's not on pin four but neither is it on pin two So now let's take our, our other 330 ohm resistor and connect this pin. Let's flatten it out first so then we can make it go into two holes. So let's go like that and let's place it on this positive pin into pin four, just like that. So there, now we have our dual flasher connected. Let's try it out. So let's connect our battery to the perspective spots. So let's put our positive pin there and our negative pin there. There. Let's just connect that. Cool, so now we have our dual flasher. And it, it works on the concept, like just look at it. Don't look at it like it's switching on and off. Think about each of them is blinking, but at a different rate. This is blinking slower and this is blinking faster. And this is because of the capacitor. So, and then the IC detecting voltages. So there you have it. And sometimes you have loose ICs. And that is because sometimes you may not have the best breadboard and stuff. So I've made this project before and I had a loose IC. So what you have to do is just push down on the IC every time you turn it on. So that is a dual flasher. And then you may not see this often, this type of thing, because when you want to actually call it a dual flasher, we talk about the physics behind it too, 
with it actually like converting and the, the timer is doing some different stuff. And this works on the concept of a 555 timer I see being in a stable mode. So there you have it, our dual flasher timer. Please refer to the description for more details in the circuit diagram. Also, all of this credit goes to Alonix Electronic Products on Redboard. And make sure to check his channel out. I have used a lot of his ideas for my videos. He's a really cool Redboard YouTuber. And I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.